Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cup Explained Cloud Application Programming, the new series on the channel, episode two. Today, we are going to talk about associations, a very important topic. But before we start, I would like to point out one mistake that I did in the first episode, and which is writing the field names with uppercase letters. And so the rule is that the entity name is plural uppercase, but the fields name are singular with lowercase. So let's quickly fix that. And let's hope that we don't make mistakes in the future. So sorry for that. And let's go with associations. Uh, associations are used to um, create relationships between entities. So very similar to joins, if you want to connect to tables, you will use an association. So let's connect something with something. We only have the books entity for now. So let's create the second entity, authors, and let's add in the same aspects that we used for books entity. And let's create one field name. Shift Alt F to format the code. And let's add the association. And I'm to do that, I'm gonna replace the type of the um, field. So for this one, I'm gonna create a connection to outer by typing in association to outers. Just like that, we created a foreign key to the outers entity from books. Um, it's called a managed association because we don't need type to type in the keys by which we are connecting these two entities. It's not the same as the managed aspect. <laughs> the managed aspect generates four uh, fields for our uh, entity and a managed association creates a foreign key auto automatically for us. We don't need to worry about it. And uh, let's just see the results. Uh, Control Shift C to open a new terminal. And I'm going to type in at CDS at data records five. But before that, I'm going to delete the whole data folder because uh, I want to regenerate the CSV data and type in enter. And as you can see, it created two CSV files. So the author's entity has four fields from the managed aspect. So this one, an ID field from CUID aspect and the name from our name that we typed in. So no connection from here to books, but if we go to the books entity, we can see a new field, author underscore ID, which is the foreign key to our author's entity. And uh, it, would, it will generate always the name by typing in field name, author underscore ID, because we have the ID field and the author's entity generated by CUID, the only key. So it happened uh, automatically. Uh, you can specify a different key if you want, then it becomes an unmatched association. And uh, for CAP, we usually want to use a uh, managed association for to one association. So if I want to have one author for this book, I will use managed association, association two. And that's the first possibility. Second one will be a too many association. So if I want to showcase that one author can have could have written many books, which is <laughs> very probable. Uh, then I will type in books, plural, because it's going to be many books, and do association to many books. But that's the end, not the end. Now we type in the keys by which we are connecting. So uh, this will be called an unmanaged association. So on which fields I am connecting. First, I type in the field name, books dot connecting to outer equal to dollar oops equal to dollar self this is the syntax for an unmanaged uh, association and for a uh, too many association you always need to pass in the keys that you are connecting to so again shield uh, <laughs> not shield sh shift alt f to format the code again let's delete the uh, data, uppercase to go back to my uh, previous 
um, command and let's generate the data. Now we're not gonna see any difference. We still have author ID and the authors, we don't see any new fields. Uh, that's just uh, how uh, a too many association, unmanaged association work because we passed in the field names, it will automatically create the connection between authors to books. Uh, I would like to show you how this uh, looks now, what uh, difference it did it make. Uh, in the future episode, when we're gonna create um, a Fury Elements app, you're gonna see how we can go from authors to books. Okay, so if I have a catalog of authors, then I can go from authors to books. Without this association, we couldn't do that. And now let's do CTS watch to start up the server, the application, control click on the link. Uh, we currently have only one entity and to change that, let's go to the service and pass in the second uh, entity that we just created, shift alt uh, arrow down to copy the line to duplicate it. And let's create a projection on authors. Uh, format the code. Let's go back to here and you can see it automatically pops up the second entity. So in add books, we have the author ID entity and in authors, uh, we don't have anything. Now we say we have created a uh, too, man too many association, but I can't see anything. Uh, not for now, but in the future, in the OData requests, it will uh, automatically create the connection, uh, which you now don't see. But if you want to see that, we can type in a too many uh, expand. So you just type in question mark, dollar sign, expand equals books. So I want to expand the current folder that I'm in with the books entity. And now magically, <laughs> you can see we created uh, a new field books with five items for this author. So this author, if you would go to uh, our CSV data, uh, has written five books. The others <laughs> don't have uh, a connection uh, in the data. So now I can expand and see the data that is in books. Without the too many association, I couldn't see that. So that's gonna be very important for the future. And I hope it's understandable that we can now see the data. Okay, great. That's the uh, two most important and uh, most basic, I would say, uh, associations. Uh, so let's go to the third one I would uh, like to show you now. First, maybe Control C to close the terminal and let's clear to make some space. Uh, the next option is a composition. Uh, what are compositions? Compositions are used uh, for cases where we have a child entity and a parent entity. And the child entity cannot exist without the parent entity. Uh, an example could be, a, I don't know, a billing document that is a header and it has positions. The position cannot exist without the header. And in our case, uh, we have books and we could create the uh, chapters entity. So a book can have many chapters, uh, but the chapters cannot exist without the book, okay? And let's create a new entity for that. Chapters with the same aspects of CUID and managed. And let's put in one field uh, of number integer. Okay. So we want to connect chapters with books. And to do that, we need to do two uh, associations. First one from chapters to books, and then a composition from books to chapters. Mm, the difference will be that this one needs to be a key field, okay? So I'll type in key book, and here uh, you could also use the word parent. Many people, when they use composition, they will type in parent, uh, but for our case, to make it maybe simpler to understand, I will just use the word book. So I create an uh, association from chapters to books. Okay, a managed association uh, chapters to books. 
and now in the chap uh, books entity, I'll create a chapters field <laughs> written uppercase plural. The only exception where you should use uppercase in the field names to, uh, to make it easier to see that this is a composition of many entities. Okay, and to type in, uh, we create composition of many chapters on which key? Again, the same as uh, by the too many association. So taken chapters dot book equal to dollar self. So the same syntax as by uh, the too many association. And that's how you create a composition. The difference between um, so the benefit of creating a composition is that when you delete the main entity, the parent entity, the child entities will also be deleted. There are also two more benefits of that, but not useful for you, uh, the second episode of uh, learning cap. Okay, so uh, we have created a connection between books uh, and chapters. Okay, so we have three entities. And to end with that, let's just uh, add some data to make sure that we didn't break anything. <laughs> Records 5. Again, I'm going to delete the data folder. And let's hope everything worked fine. So we get three entities now, three CSV data. And you can see the book ID is in the chapters. Okay, uh, that is connected, uh, connecting the chapter with the book. And in the books entity, uh, we don't see the chapter ID because it's a uh, too many uh, association, the same as a composition, uh, as a too many association. A composition won't generate a new field in the table. Okay, in the background, it will know that the connection exists. It will be useful in the future episode, which we will see. And yeah, let's just see this, watch this to make sure everything works fine. The last thing I, did, I forgot now is to uh, project the chapters entity. And what is nice, you can see automatically the, when you run with CDS Watch, the server is automatically running, constantly reloading. If you change something, it will reload, and then you don't need to type in CDS Watch every time. So let's go back here, refresh, a third entity appears, chapters. Okay, so connection to book ID. And again, we can uh, create an expand, which I showed you from books and uh, from authors to books you can do an expand from books to chapters. So uh, question mark, dollar sign, expand equal chapters. I did something wrong. Let's just see what. Ah, OK, uppercase. So we see that this is a case sensitive. That's very important. And we see this in the fourth book to a chapter seven generated. And yeah, that's the use of associations and compositions. Uh, we get uh, got an error before, but now we got a successful get or data statement. Okay. So these are the three uh, main associations, uh, connection types that I wanted to show you in this episode. There is one more, uh, many to many association, which is a bit more complicated. And I don't think you should <laughs> know about it uh, now. I mean, you should know that it exists. But for this episode, I think that's enough informa information. Uh, try it out by yourself. And I think in the uh, next episode, we're going to create some logic for our uh, service or maybe even create an Fury Elements app. So stay tuned. Thank you for today and see you in the next videos. Leave a like, a subscription. Bye.